Things are really starting to ramp up here as we get all of our production online, including some of our very first automated manufacturing setups. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we did a ton of work on the base, as well as work on some of our permanent production lines. Because now we're in the beginning stages of automating the world. And we need hundreds, if not thousands, of smelters, constructors, and the like. And also, we started to dabble with mods. So we got the Area Actions mod here. And this mod allows us to copy and paste buildings and also have creative flight. So it is extremely handy and allowing me to work on monotonous projects and get more videos to you guys sooner. However though, there are some mixed receptions with us using mods now because a lot of you guys wanted to see this be a vanilla playthrough and you know what, I 100% understand. Uh, like I said in the last video, we're going to only use this mod for the literal most monotonous things possible. And other than that, we're just not gonna use it. In fact, I'm not even gonna use it for showing things off anymore. Because all the stuff I'd ever use this for would get booped out of the video. So, there we go. Backgrounded, all is well in the world. Well, almost. A lot of people had a lot of feedback over our spine system that we started building last time. Because now that we're automating all the items in the world, or at least beginning to, we need to bring stuff up our base. And the old way of doing things was not very good, so we made up this spine system where out of the legs of our bees, we'd have these towers arise through them and enter different areas. And most people were okay with the concept, but not exactly with the execution. Because I got a lot of comments saying that our bees looks very robust and powerful. And that these spines we created look just way too flimsy and don't really fit with the rest of the bees. And you know what? I 100% agree. So we're gonna kinda bulk them up a bit and change up the design. And right off the bat here, I have an extremely good idea about how we could do that. And that is by filling in the sides with walls, which kinda looks boring from the outset, but then what we can do is you see the middle of the tower is pretty much empty, right? Well, why not? have these conveyor lift kind of junctions tiered apart so we could have conveyor lifts on all four sides of the pillar. And that would really fill it out and make it look way, 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 way better. So yeah, we'd just have the wall conveyors just like that. We'd have them behind. And then we could have even more conveyor lifts moving even more items up and, well, just up really, <laughs> up the spines. Oh yeah, and you can already start to see it. That's gonna look much, 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 much better. So moving forward, we're gonna be doing this. But first, we actually have to get more items to bring upstairs. We're only bringing in six lines, and there are many more nodes around the desert that we need to scoop. So I'm gonna work on that for a while. And then we have a ton of processing to do. <laughs> Another change of plans here, but I was gonna gather all the resources in the desert, but then I got started again and I realized, oh yeah, that's gonna take like 20 hours. So what I did instead is I managed to get all of the unique resources we could grab. So way back there, there's a little bit of quartz there. We got some caterium on the hill over there. And then we have pretty much everything else. So this side of the map is all done. And we can pretty much make anything now. Also, added in another pillar over there bring everything up and it's looking pretty good it's busy busy looking a lot more powerful you know what I mean got bridges got spice looking nice and with all this stuff in beast now our goal today is to get into some manufacturing maybe all of it I'm not sure <laughs> I don't want to like be over ambitious but I like to get some manufacturing going like if it's heavy mod to their frames or like computers, crystal oscillators, one of the few. Because we really need something online here. And in lieu of that, I've done some preparations, but now we have another set of, what is this actually? I think this is, yeah, another set of 40 smelters off to the right. So this side is all gonna be iron, and this side is all going to be copper. And then like I mentioned in the last episode, 
we're gonna have that mirrored on the other side as well for the items we're bringing in from over there. But for now, we're gonna get this all hooked up. So just a quick recap. Essentially, all of the items will go into a splitter there. That will split everything in half and it will overflow into five smelters on this side and five smelters on the other side. And everything kind of gathers together underneath and for each little section, everything ends up here. And we have this system one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Oh, so wait, yeah, we have 80 smelters? We have 160 smelters total then. Wow, okay, that's pretty good. That's a lot of smelters, brother. We can absolutely get started with that. So let's do it. I've put some doorways, oh my gosh, I've put some doorways here for, to let us bring the belts through, and it's so handy. Because with the conveyor walls, it's either middle, three, or the two, but if you just have a door on one side, it's perfect for scenarios like this. Because look at that, we're moving and grooving. And we can move them across just like so, and everything's kind of up and above board. That's pretty good. And then over here, just at the turn, we'll have to make kind of like corner caps to round the corners properly, and that'll look pretty good. Oh wait, we have inputs over here too. Okay, maybe at this point things get a little wacky. I'm not sure. Let's start to figure it out. What do we even have around here? Well, here we have a bunch of coal that I found and some quartz, so we don't need to worry about that yet. And over here, oh, we just have a mess. We got some copper, we have iron, limestone. Oh, oh. Wait a second. Wait, hold up. One limestone? Oh! There's like a billion lines over here. I thought there was only one iron line. I was like, dude, what am I doing? We can't start with that. I just I actually haven't paid much attention to the resources we're bringing in. You know, we got one iron line there. Oh my gosh, and I think a disaster up here? There's supposed to be more iron. Okay, and you know what? I checked over things again, and guess what? But we have lots more resources coming in. I thought we had way more than two iron lines for sure. And we actually have five. So we have another normal node, another normal node, and a pure node of iron that we can process. Oh boy, oh Nelly! Well, finding all those other lines and hooking them up has certainly made this area busy. And this isn't even dealing with all the coal and quartz yet. Like, this is just the iron, the copper, and the 1k terium line. And it's already looking like this. Which is, uh, wild! Oh, one problem though, is with the, what are they called? The conveyor wall mounts is they're really cool and I wanted to use them a lot more but then they only attach to the walls right so you can't use the middle lane of each platform foundation so unfortunately we had to use like just foundations with the walls but that's okay it's still so busy that it looks great anyway so yeah that is all good everything is all hooked up there is only one small problem it's kind of a good thing Kind of a problem, kind of a, I guess a catch-22. And that is that our smelter array here has 10 smelters per little mini system, right? So everything enters into 10 smelters and that can handle 300 items per minute, which is the equivalent to the output of a fully power sharded normal node. So a Mark II miner, normal iron node with all the power shards makes 300 items per minute. And that's exactly what our smelter array can handle. And I'm sure most of you already see the problem here. And that is, what about the pure nodes? Because with a pure node, in the same conditions, we'll fill a 480 line. So that's 480 items per minute coming down a line. And that's not gonna work out with 10 smelters, no siree Bob. So we have like two options. Number one is we'd have to increase the clock speed of the smelters to match the 480 line. And that would make us have to use two power shards per smelter. So that's 20 power shards to make the clock speed 160 and get the target production rate to 48 per minute. Or there was the other option of underclocking, which is what we actually did here. So what I did is I just underclocked 20, yeah, 20 smelters to 80%. So they each have a production rate of 24 and 20 times 24 equals 480. So all of these guys, are on 80% clock speed in handling just that one pure iron node. 
which is nuts. It kind of is a good visual representation of just how much better the pure notes are and how much worse the impure notes are. Like, it's drastically different. Drastically. But, handled now. Uh, the copper was all good too. Only had two lines of that, so they're just normal notes as well. They're all dealt with. And that is iron and copper. Next up on the docket then, let's deal with Caterium. So, Caterium we're gonna be sending through the refineries here. Using your special pure Caterium ingot alternate recipe. And to better show it off here, this takes two Caterium plus two water to make one Caterium ingot. Versus the standard in a smelter, which takes three Caterium ore to make one ingot. So, 30% increase in productivity with this one, but then we use a little bit of water. And also the major inconvenience of having to make a bunch of refineries. Well, that's okay. Our base is supposed to be tall, we're supposed to move in groove, and this is how we're gonna do it. Because there's not really a lot of Caterium in the entire world, so we're kind of forced into this position. Fortunately though, with the 480 lines, this whole system is extremely easy to set up. So we just pipe in the water, and we just need a pure Caterium node, which I actually got from over here. And yeah, 480 divided by 24 equals 20. We have 40 refineries set up, so half of them just take care of the Caterium, and boom! Easy peasy. As for the water, we need 480 water, so I've had to bring in two separate water pipes. And we're gonna have to siphon a little bit off somewhere else for something else, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. But for now, we're just bringing in 600 water to deal with this situation. And yeah, we're gonna have to figure out a different setup for our other Caterium node, which is normal. So it's only 300 per minute, and 24 and 300 aren't the best numbers, but we'll figure that out later because right now, we're moving and grooving. So there it all goes, we're using the overflow method, so yeah, we overflow through half the machines and then the other half of the Caterium overflows backwards, and honestly it's gonna be really, really, really slow, like overflowing through 20 different machines is not exactly the best method, but hey, should all work out just fine eventually. Just gonna have a real slow start, as you can already see. It would have been a better idea to load balance this all, but oh, look at this system! It's too good, brother! It's too good! Too compact, too convenient. There are times at which it's just how you have to rock and roll. Oh, it's also important to actually... Oh, no, I did. I did connect up the lines. Oh, yeah, 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 this is the middle here, so yeah, nothing goes through here. Okay, this one's just gonna be extremely slow. Anyway, though, that's 12... How much Caterium is this? 12 times 20. That's 240 Caterium ingots per minute. Not bad. All right. So that's Caterium, copper, and iron. Next on the docket is going to be quartz. And we're gonna deal with quartz crystals right now. We don't have much of a use for the silica until a tier seven and eight. So we're gonna be doing the same thing here, where we're gonna use the alternate pure quartz crystal recipe in our refinery. However, now we don't have enough water left because we used all of our water on this system and the residual water that's going in here is not enough to power all of our things over here, the refineries. And you know what we do when we run out of something? We get more, more water. Because the world is now our oyster and if we see something, we go get it, brother. We consume it all. So. Over here, we buy these two impure coal nodes. There's just a little puddle, and we took it. We took it all. And we managed to get another six lines of 300 water a piece back to base. Well, almost. I did like the legwork pretty much. So we got the water extractors down, and oh my gosh. I think I built the coolest piece of infrastructure in our world almost yet. I think our oil pipelines are still a little bit more cool, but look at this! Ooh, ho, 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 ho. That is one spicy tower. I managed to get all of the water pipelines inside of these foundations here. Fantastic. All of the power is inside the tower, pretty much, except for one main power line. And yeah, everything's hidden, everything's clean, and... <laughs> 
I'm just really proud of this. I'll be real. I like it a lot. And you know, gathering more stuff only gets easier and easier as we progress through the game. Because now, we have so much infrastructure in just like these last two videos, that all you have to do is dip off an existing piece, and there you go. You just get more. So yeah, we had a bridge coming down this way, I'm just like, yo, let's make another. There's power here, there's quick ways of travel, it's all good, for the most part. All right, Mr. Ball, all right. But yeah, I might still set up some hyper tubes just out and around the world though. It would be convenient, we'll see. Oh yeah, and also, I had a live stream, so things are a little bit more decorated. Added in some pillars, added in some decorations. <laughs> And now when we look around the world, it's not just floating platforms everywhere, but it actually looks, you know, relatively proper. And it'll look even more nice once I actually hook up the rest of the pipes here, but they just go all the way down here. And from here, they enter into the train bay area, where we already have kind of a few industrial fluid buffers. So yeah, I'm gonna bring them here for now. We'll bring a couple just upstairs and figure out what else to do with them, I'm not really sure. But eventually, we're gonna have some water going up these pipes here and just up the back of the base. And this just goes exactly to our processing floor, with enough pumps to keep things moving and grooving, and this adds a really nice bit of detail to the back of the base. But now with the water, just brought over some quartz, hooked everything together exactly the same way as I did with the Caterium, and pff, if I could get a view here, you can s oh my gosh. Come on, come on. <laughs> you can see that it is complete. All of the quartz crystals being made, and we're making about 480 of them per minute. We have 10 refineries on 89% each. That's about 46.7 output, so about 48, yeah. And with another thing done, all that means is we move on to the next thing on the list, which is going to be the concrete. So with limestone, there's two things we can do with it. We can either make the cheap silica, or we can make lime, or concrete, yeah. It's like pretty much the two only things. Since silica is more a tier seven thing, we're just gonna make concrete. And do you know how I mentioned I was streaming? Well, it was a really productive stream, okay? <laughs> and the concrete is being formed, oh. And we went a little overboard with things. Like, crazy overboard with things. And built these horrific, horrific machines. So what this is doing though, just as a general overview, I'll go into detail in a moment. But just as a general overview, uh, these 20 constructors take the 900 limestone and make 300 concrete per minute. The ratios are perfect. All is well in the world. Concrete for days. And now I could have used refineries like I did with the Caterium and the Quartz to make more concrete, but I didn't want to deal with more water, and also concrete isn't all that important, like large scale, because it's really only used for the heavy modular frames and encased industrial beams. So we're just processing it, and I made this really, really cool looking design. Let me break it down for you. For this, I knew I needed 20 constructors, so we have five rows of four, and what I did is all the inputs come underneath here, they go up to the next modular frame thing, or foundation frame, you see where my head's at, but yeah, goes the next foundation frame, splits up just into one constructor, like these are two separate lines here, right? And then the other line goes up to the top row. So like, it's pretty simple. But the design is really spicy, because now with the outputs, I have the merger behind here. So the belts move out of the way, they come on down, merge into this, and then move forward into another row of mergers that goes straight on ahead. And that's how the output is on the front and on the back. Just over, oh my gosh, it's so compact, it's like insane to get around. Just over, though, here. Aha. There we go. And then a couple of little detailing things here and there just to make it a little bit more interesting. Yeah? Yeah! Though, the most interesting part about this, aside from the incredible level of detail, 
is I completely forgot about a super omega good processing method. And that is using the injector method. And this is honestly really worth explaining because it is super omega good. Highly would recommend it. But essentially, an overflow method goes like this. You just have a bunch of splitters in a row. The splitters all split off into another machine. So by the end of the line, uh, the last splitter and the last machine don't get a lot of items. So say you're starting with 300 items, like with the limestone. Uh, 150 goes to here until it overflows, and 150 goes to here, then 75, half of 75, half of half of 75, a quarter of 75. Good math. So yeah, that's kind of like the big problem with overflow that we always try and like compensate for by using load balancers and other methods. But, 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 there's a spicier way, aside from either just overflow or by completely load balancing, which is really easy too. So what you can do here is rate out this first splitter. Instead of just splitting in two ways to the machine and to the next splitter, we split three ways. I gotta add this to my bar, holy. But yeah, we split three ways, go like midway through the load balancing system, and we add in a merger. Uh -huh -huh. And with the merger, that kind of rebalances items. So now it's like 30%, half of 30%. Then over here, it's like a little more than 30%. And some number, I don't know. The numbers get crazy. But what this is doing is it's better distributing all of the items across the whole system. So it's not like perfect load balancing, but it's so much more efficient. Especially say we had a full 480 line going into an overflow system. Well at that point what we can just do is we can have, I don't know, say another 480 line and just up above here. We merge the top one into the bottom one. So when this 480 line loses half of its items to the first machine, the top line refills the missing stuff. So every time the splitter loses some, we merge more on loses some more, merge more on, etc, etc, etc. You go down the whole line, and everything is pretty dang good. In fact, I'd say this is probably one of the better ways to actually optimize your factory. And that's what we did over here. So we started with three 300 lines. I broke down one of them and uh, merged it into two 450 lines. And we did that kind of injector method going all the way down here. So everything goes in the bottom line, just overflowing normally. And then we inject more stuff in per, like, system. System R2. I found that since the lines are so full, going every, like, two or three systems and injecting more in worked a little bit better. You can play around with it, and I will definitely play around with it more. But overall, it was a wild success. And although I haven't measured out the exact, like, output rate of the concrete, it's dang good. It's not 100% load balanced, but holy, it'll do. But anyway, that's all that. Now, what? <laughs> what do we do? We have quartz, we have all the belts dealt with. What do we need? I guess we can actually look into manufacturing. Because now that we have everything processed, we can actually start, like, finally manufacturing. So what would be, like, the easiest thing right now? Well, we have computers. Computers are iffy, though. Uh, we want to actually use a different recipe. We want to use... The circuit board and crystal oscillator recipe. So we're not gonna worry about this right now. Also, it takes rubber and plastic, so I don't really wanna deal with that yet. So we'll leave computers be. But there are other things that we can work on, like crystal oscillators. Specifically, this recipe here is really straightforward. It's just cable, reinforced iron plates, and the quartz crystals. We can easily make this stuff, and we already have that. So this is pretty much done for us. We just have to organize the lines. And since we're switching to manufacturing and more processing now, we're gonna cover this floor up with the next one, and we'll deal with all the manufacturing work, because this one's pretty much already done. We just have to decorate it a lot. But we'll save that for later. Oh my goodness here, but I finished the top floor, and I was gonna do all the manufacturing here, and then I realized, why would I do that? All we're really trying to do is automate the manufacturing things just so we have it automated and have a permanent setup. So essentially that's gonna be like, what is it? 
three manufacturers? Building a whole floor of our base for three manufacturers is insane. And I have a significantly better idea. Because what we really want all these computers and heavy modular frames and stuff for, spoiler alert, is we want them all so we can get into trains. Because once we have trains, the world is ours. No more belt bridges across space and time. We have the whole world to conquer. So yeah, we just need this stuff moving and grooving. And on our floor here with our main hub, I have a ton of space that I've kind of just left just for projects just like this. And you know what? We're gonna be doing our automating right down here. So we'll get the crystal oscillators, heavy mod to their frames, and then, what is this gonna be then? This will not be computers, this will probably be high speed connectors. If we have them unlocked, we, what? In memento here? I thought for sure we had these unlocked. There we go. Cool. And now we can make those there. <gasps> oh! The super computers are available in the MAM? That's wild! So you don't get that through unlocks in like tier five, six, or seven. Very interesting. <gasps> and inventory slots, oh my gosh. Yeah, that is a development. Anyway, but yeah, we're gonna be automating the high speed connectors as well over there because they use generally the same parts. So you know, high speed connectors. Cool, that's quick wire cable and circuit boards. Hmm, circuit boards, all right. And then just beside here then, we'll have an assembler for computers. Anyway though, like I was saying, we just need this automated, we need it to run, and we actually have a source of items that we don't actually really rely on. And that's the stuff that's auto refilling our hub. So over here, we're making just basic stuff like cables, iron plates, screws, and all that kind of stuff. And we can further process it through all the extra space that we have on this floor. And then we can basically just get all the manufacturers running. And what an omega good idea this was. So I even took it even further, and now we're processing pretty much everything we need. So I got the motors going, we got the computers, the modular frames, the high speed connectors, and the crystal oscillators. All of them are now running. And thankfully, we don't have to like go and refill bins or do any of that, just passively over time, we're gonna start building up items and we'll actually be able to do some stuff here. And that's not even the best thing about all of this. And that's that all the items that we're using for those manufacturers and assemblers are pretty much irrelevant. We're using impure nodes to both refill our storage room and make all the manufactured goods. The only thing that we're kinda taking just a little bit from is our Caterium line and our Quartz line. Because the plastic is just from the residue used to make our power and we weren't gonna use that like officially anyway because power is so like all over the place with us. And yeah, same deal with the steel and the encased industrial beams. We're never gonna use those for any of our advanced productions. So everything here has worked out perfectly. With the only caveat being we're gonna have to wait a while for stockpiles to build up, but well, that's okay. We have many, 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 many other projects we need to work on, like decorating, or our actual oil setup, or you know, building a hundred thousand more fuel power plants. Like, we have stuff to do. And also, I'm more so just happy that all of the progress that we made in this room, and all of the items in here, can be used for our actual production lines when we start making like hundreds of thousands of super computers and the like. And oh boy, that stuff is coming soon. However though, I think that is gonna be all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did, please remember to leave a like and I hope to see you in the next video. But anyway, have a fantastic rest of your day and bye bye <laughs>